in general, most people, most working adults, um, tend to restrict their sleep. So they don't get as much sleep as they need to. And the way that you know this is because most people sleep in on the weekends, right? So during the week, you're sleeping six hours. Um, and during the weekend, you usually sleep about eight. So we know that people in general likely are self-restricting their sleep. And astronauts in particular, because of the, of the demands on their time, probably aren't getting adequate sleep or as much sleep as they would like to be able to do. Plus, they also need to wake up and perform you know, various critically important functions. So the Trish project is basically using the device to try to enhance sleep. And the device is a closed loop system. So it records EEG activity and then uses that activity to decide when to stimulate. Basically, when you're deeply asleep, it starts to stimulate. And we're trying out different types of algorithms to see which have the best uh, waking performance benefits. So um, one way of doing that is stimulating uh, at a regular fixed interval, which is at one hertz, which is what the brain is actually oscillating at anyway. Another way of doing it is trying to estimate the phase that the brain is uh, oscillating at at any given moment, and so that's called in-phase stimulation. And then we also do a pattern stimulation, which is five seconds of stimulation, five seconds off, and do that throughout the course of deep sleep. And we're testing how each of those different algorithms impacts sleep, so does it help you sleep deeper? And then also, how does it affect your waking performance? So how do you perform on various cognitive tests? What makes this a Trish project is that, first of all, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing to do. So this is the first time that we've uh, given this device to people for, we're giving it to them for basically two months, and they're trying out each of these different algorithms for two weeks at a time. So it's doing cognitive batteries like this day after day after day is also a, a pretty risky thing to do. It's, it's, it's a taxing thing for a subject to, to do. And the technology itself is relatively you know, nascent, so we still don't know a lot about what the long-term outcomes of, of doing this kind of stimulation you know, day after day after day is. So Trish seems like the, the type of uh, organization that's interested in funding those kind of you know, very nascent, you know, possibly really impactful types of uh, technologies. I mean, I, I will say this, and this may sound really corny, but one of the, it, it's one of the first times that I actually told my daughter that I was doing a grant with NASA and she got super geeked up about it. So like, that kind of thing is, is cool. It's, it's just a cool thing to be a part of. And I think, you know, a lot of us as kids were, you know, interested in space and space shuttles and stuff. I actually had a moon on my bedroom wall. So like actually doing something with, with the space program is, is a really cool thing. Would I go to Mars? Yeah, in a heartbeat, I'd do it. Would people say no? I thought about it, I was like, you know, would my wife and kid be okay with that? And I'd be like, I'm going to Mars. What do you, I mean, you gotta, you know, your dad goes to Mars, you gotta deal with it, right? And you gotta tell your kids at school that your dad went to Mars. I mean, that's awesome.